I'm gonna talk about um, one of our biggest open source projects um, which we built last year um, in React Native, um, which is called Pepperoni. Um, so, <coughs> some small things about me. I'm Tino, I'm a um, software engineer at Futures since uh, last year. I'm working in our London office. And um, originally, I'm actually from Berlin, so not too far away from me. So we at Futurist, as uh, Dennis pointed out already quite correctly, we, we're a design and a uh, software consultancy. So we, we love building uh, products, services for different clients, and um, usually we do that also from end to end, from the, from the idea to the actual um, product itself. And uh, in London, we are still a quite small um, group of people. So one, when like two years ago, clients approached us and said, well, Actually, we would really like you guys to build also um, our next app. Um, we just run into one problem. We were so small that we didn't even have iOS developers because you know, they wanted an iOS app. Um, but what we actually had, we had JavaScript developers. They were really keen to try new things. And then we um, learned about that new and interesting technology called React Native. And uh, when we played around with that, we actually realized that's definitely how we want to build apps um, because this is um, the way we can scale for different platforms um, with a small size team um, and then build really nice apps. And today I'm going to talk about um, how we do that and, and what we build for it. So first of all, let's have a little tech recap. So who of you guys know what React is? That's that's a fairly good group. That's I like that. So. I don't even have to go over the slides then. But basically, just to, to recap for, for everyone, the idea of React is uh, it's a JavaScript uh, um, framework by Facebook. Um, and the idea is that you have all your application state um, in one finger point of truth and one uh, object, and it will it represents basically this um, the state example represents this, this screen with different kind of uh, information, for example, name of the of this location or uh, the specific location of latitude and longitude and stuff like that. And um, oops, one too much. And the the cool idea of React is that you build your app in in small components. So you don't uh, every component is basically uh, has its own subset of a state, and you can style that component and reuse it. And um, you you build a very modular. Um, architecture with that. So, for for example, in that uh, in that specific uh, UI, this tab bar here is a separate component and will look like this. So, the other idea is the virtual DOM. So, whenever you build something <coughs> in React, you can um, assume that your app will behave like it will render the whole app the whole time. So, whenever you want to um, change something. You can rely on that that you can do it, but React is smart enough to only re-render the parts which actually changed. And that's why it's of course also called React, because different components react to a state change, and that helps um, the whole system um, to be quite um, performant and also and, and encourages client side rendering. And then there is this idea of an unidirectional data flow called also the flux pattern. So um, when you have your view, the, the view components, they are not meant to change the state or something in your state, but rather um, everything, every data or every change in your app flows into one direction. So whenever a user, for example, clicks a button, it triggers an action um, that will be, uh, that action will be dispatched to the store, something changed. So for example, if you clicked on you want to select a specific location, and that change to London, and um, the uh, view will be notified from the store that now the, um, the location changed, and uh, the view re-renders the parts which need to be re-rendered. And that um, allows um, a quite good and controlled flow of data within your app. And for even more advanced uh, state management, we're using Redux, which is quite uh, typical way if you want to build even bigger apps. And, hello? No, I think the microphone works now. 
Did I really need to have a mic? Can, can you guys understand me or not? Yeah. It does actually, I think, is a big problem. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think we can have it for questions. <coughs> yeah, if you don't understand me, then I either shout louder or I use the microphone. But it's like I want to do gestures and stuff like that. Um, so, Redux. And, and if you, it doesn't matter if you, and I will get into some examples of Redux later on, but um, if you want to um, learn more about Redux or if you think you know about everything already, I just found this quite interesting book, uh, the complete uh, Redux book, um, which uh, I personally find a very interesting source of um, yeah, getting even more information on that. And it was when, by the time I checked it, it was actually also free, so if you don't want to pay for it, you could also get it like this. Um, and it covers quite a lot of examples and, and, and describes the whole um, idea even, even in more detail. So now coming to the actual interesting bit, React Native. Who heard about React Native already? It's almost more people than React, so how is that <laughs> something wrong? Mm -hmm. um, so React Native, of course, it basically, it's based on React, but it is not a mobile web app or not your next hybrid app, but it's, it's, a, real, um, it's, it's a real app. So it's basically, you write your JavaScript, you write your React code, you structure your application, the way you would do it in your, uh, your web application, but React Native actually generates native UI elements. So in this example, this is from Xcode, when you preview uh, one of the apps I just built for an example, um, and you see the, the actual UI elements from, from iOS, so these RTC text uh, and, and images, and this, this allows you to um, still write um, one source code, basically your React code, but um, you'll be able to write cross-platform. So one of our, um, so right now React Native is available for iOS and Android, and, and, and also for Windows, although I haven't used it that much, and I also don't know that many examples, but it is already available. And in one of the projects we had, which was a quite big one actually, <coughs> we were able to reuse um, roughly 90% of the code between iOS and Android, including business logic, which is um, quite a big advantage if you think about um, when we have to develop something in a small time frame for um, with a well, limited number of people, then this is uh, quite powerful to get um, your application in, uh, in different app stores uh, at this uh, limited time. But it's not all, only about that, it's also for the developer experience, it's quite powerful. So you're going to have live and country loading, which you as a maybe web developer find is quite typical, but for, um, for iOS at least I find it quite, quite nice and also um, the developer tools are very good to uh, inspect your state of your application. You can replay actions and I'm going to show an example afterwards. So coming back, tech stuff done. For, not yet, it's not this yeah. So it's basically, so we among them, we said, okay, let's do let's do React Native. Um, we built our first uh, couple of apps, and they roughly uh, they looked like these, and we were <coughs> happy. We actually also felt a bit frustrated because what we had to do, we had to almost reinvent the wheel again and again. But because when we build projects, we um, um, the code is uh, uh, yeah in property of our client, right? So we don't want to um, we kind of use uh, stuff again and again. We we have to um, we have to give the code in, in the end. So what we what we build here are quite different apps, but if you look at the structure, they are actually quite similar. So they usually all have the app bar, although they might differ from uh, uh, from the position in Android and iOS. But roughly, they have tabs. They have some kind of navigation tab, navigation stack, navigation inside one tab, and um, not only UI uh, components, but also the whole infrastructure. If it comes to um, your, your dev tool, you want to reset your state because you want to play with stuff, you want to have a local cache because when users reopen the app, it shouldn't start from the beginning. And all of that is something we didn't want it to reinvent again and again. And that's why we thought we, no, we actually did build an app starter kit for iOS and Android uh, based on React Native, and we called it AppRub. So this, um, and also we also open sourced it. So, which allowed uh, us to learn from the community. We wanted to give back something um, um, to the community and also which enabled us to um, 
use that as a foundation and as a basis uh, on how we want to build and how we build uh, React Native projects for, for different occasions. Uh, and we also use it already uh, quite a bit um, as uh, on our own. So these are just a few examples. In it was there are two Android apps, one one like kids app only in Android. They they used to build in Helsinki um, with the kids workshop, and this one was a uh, actually for girls in IT. Super Ada also in Helsinki. They wanted to have like an app for their for their event space, and this is this was one of our um, biggest. Um, client projects where, um, where we build Android and iOS apps for um, like a big energy company and they were able to have these 9% of code sharing. So what is actually part of React uh, of Pepperoni? So Pepperoni allows you to um, have the basic building blocks of the app already ready. Uh, it uses common mobile app features like navigation, like um, simple state management and we'll bundle all that together um, so that you can focus on uh, the features in your app. And it's also quite easily extendable if, for example, React Native doesn't support a specific feature for a platform, then you can use uh, a native extension, which is rather also a feature of React Native, and you can yeah, connect, that, connect that as well. So to illustrate that a bit, um, we built a little sample app. Um, which uh, illustrates the navigation and also an authentication uh, idea. We used Authero for that, so which is an additional provider um, which you can just plug in and it allows you to have user management and social models uh, right in place. So let's let's go to the more interesting part, which is the demo, which is always working differently like you would expect. That's the interesting part. So here uh, I have an iOS simulator and an Android simulator. I will sit down because it looks awkward otherwise. <laughs> and um, this is a little um, yeah, sample app I built uh, to, to illustrate um, the basic functionality of, uh, of Pepperoni. We actually just um, we, we updated back there just a few days ago um, to, um, to a new uh, navigation version. So. I will show some screenshots afterwards that on iOS, we, uh, I'm sorry, on Android we already use um, material design. But yeah, so this, this little app is uh, basically a launch build, so you can um, select uh, your city you're, you're, you're living in right now, so we chose the city so we have offices in. You click in, oh, I think <laughs> and it was obvious, right? Uh, so you click in here, or you don't click here. Um, oh god. Oh, of course it's a demo. Um, and, um, and the same, it doesn't. It looks, uh, it looks the same on. Um, oh God. I love it. That's why I love demos. Um, and it looks the same on, on iOS and, uh, and, and Android. And that's and it, this was purely written in, in React Native. Okay. So this is what I actually wanted to show because the cool thing is, um, if uh, if you get um, so this was a planned one, the other one wasn't planned. Before. Um, if you get an error in uh, React Native, um, you get this little red screen. And when you click on it, um, it opens, so it shows you that in, I don't know, City View 72, it has an error. And uh, if you click on it, it jumps directly in your editor and shows you the, uh, the location, uh, what went wrong. And of course, there seems to be a typo in, in the method we are calling. Uh, with hot reloading, uh, the app re-renders instantly. And if you click on it, hey, it finally works. So now we uh, chose a run random place in London where we could go for lunch, which is uh, William the Fourth, which is uh, one of our favorite pubs uh, close to our office there. But if you don't want to go there because it's quite early in the, uh, the day, you just go to Coffee Junction or you click as long as you want and you find maybe another place. So this is just um, this is the debug example also with uh, the hot reloading. So for example, if you um, let's go back uh, to the main screen, if you want to change some text here. Um, what's for dinner, and uh, this will change instantly. You, you could, for example, also connect two React packages, um, so they, they're running on the same packages, um, and if you connect two, then you could potentially also have hot reloading on both platforms at the same time. It's a nice to have. Um, and with the debugger, we, which, which comes with React Native, um, you could also um, you can inspect your state. So, um, 
So basically, if you um, do you see what kind of actions uh, were played um, and, and how the state looks like. So this is this is the state, and as I said, it has like sub states depending on the uh, on the functionality. So it has a city state with a with a value of city we are in, or it has a navigation state where it, uh, where it knows which kind of routes and which kind of tasks we have. And um, if we want to um, replay something um, and go through the history, we could actually also replay the whole. Um, the whole navigation and it will play through quite nicely. Okay, but that's uh, that's so far for the demo. I hope you have got a little uh, idea about uh, React Native. Now I need to find my presentation again. Here, cool. So now let's look a bit more in detail. That, that all looks good, but we also, of course, want to understand what actually happened in the background. So. What happens actually when I click the uh, what, what's for lunch button and how will it work internally? Um, so first of all, um, Pepperoni ships with uh, navigation support, and that it is this is the one we just had until three days ago because we just upgraded to React navigation, um, which is um, which is also stack and tap based navigation, which we rebuilt or which we built first ourselves. Because like when we built the uh, the pepperoni, like one year ago, um, something like React navigation wasn't out there, and that that also shows already quite how fast and, and how how the whole technology evolves. But something like React navigation supports already um, um, rendering of 60 frames per second, so it's it's a really smooth transition uh, between different different um, tabs. And also, um, what I already said, if you um, if you use this one navigation library, it will if you want um, render differently on uh, on iOS and Android depending on on the uh, on the actual um, well design uh, pattern. So, for example, um, if you would check out Pepperoni today, it is it has the top navigation with icons on iOS, but the a more uh, a material design. Um, inspired one with the tabs on the top for Android and this, this already um, is quite powerful if you want to write only one code base but cater for different different platforms and this um, this is something we bundled now inside Pepperon because we feel this is this would be the next step how we want to um, be ready and how we want to build our next React Native app and, um, and not rebuild everything ourselves so share what we um, use, what, what's already out there. Now into state management. So I already said that we're using Redux um, for advanced state management. Um, we're using Redux loop, which is an addition for um, asynchronous actions, and immutable JS for um, safe state updates. So let's look at an example. So this is our uh, simplified version of our city view. So we have an, an image there, um, a text, and then the button. Um, with props um, of, uh, of a function to, to find to find the location where I should go launch. Um, so our Redux uh, state would just simply look like this. The location um, would be would not be set right now, um, and then we have an action um, and an action creator, which basically um, generates us a random uh, location for now and um, it dispatches an action object. And the uh, reducer, which is uh, the best dispatcher in Redux, uh, Redux world, will uh, listen to all actions which come in. And in this uh, case, it will be the find uh, location action. And um, if, if this comes in, it will return the state with the new uh, location uh, in, the, in the action payload, which will be sent through the other action. If another action comes in through this reducer, it will, in this switch case statement, not find anything but just return the state as is. Um, so here in, um, so how, how we are going to connect now our view with our state. Uh, for that, Redux uh, provides a simple function called connect, which basically just um, um, uses the, uh, or takes what we have in the state um, and maps the, uh, maps the state um, uh, object to, to our property object of our view, and it does the same with, uh, with a location function. 
um, which we then can call uh, in our view when someone uh, triggers a button. And that's why we are able here to, uh, to uh, use this find location view and the location itself uh, would be used in the actual uh, location view, but this is something I haven't used yet. So for immutable, uh, regarding immutable DNS, so immutable uh, allows us to have safe state updates. So usually the, the upper part would be that we always uh, create a new, with the spread operator, we create a new state object, which, is, which can be in large applications quite uh, performance decreasing. So we actually set um, our state in place and we're using immutable JS to make sure that we do not uh, change states at uh, what's change properties at the um, situations where we don't want it. And um, Redux loop is, um, uh, is one of many libraries where you can, uh, which you can use for asynchronous actions in, in Redux. And in this particular case, for example, we want to call maybe a Foursquare API to fetch um, uh, trending locations around. So we basically first set our location uh, loading spinner or something like that to true, that the um, view will be modified already. Now we have to wait for something uh, for an easy transaction to come back, and we will um, then dispatch uh, a function with an, with an effect, so a promise, to uh, find that call that uh, separate location. And uh, when, when the result comes back, so it will dispatch a separate location action, and we can then um, use it here, or we, the reducer will take that action here and set the new location based on the response. For testing, we're using Jest and Enzyme. Jest is already part of the, of the React Native, um, which is yeah, quite, um, quite powerful to run uh, tests in parallel, so if you have a lot of tests, you can uh, increase your testing, uh, well, the, the speed of uh, your tests actually run. And it also is you know, quite powerful with snapshot testing, so if you just want to save um, the state of your view, where you, which you want to um, make sure that it always behaves like that, you create a snapshot, and <coughs> if you um, change something in your view, the snapshot test will say, is it really the change you want? Then you update it, and if you accidentally change something, you might change your code. And the enzyme is used for like interaction handling. Uh, if you, it can simulate uh, or shallow render your DOM and also simulate clicks in order to test um, the interaction of your app. And also Pepperoni uh, comes with a couple of infrastructure um, components. So we have a little dev tool menu. For example, you can reset your state or add your own um, dev tool uh, commands. It comes with the um, bitrise configuration for um, uh, for a CI server. So this is actually also what we're using for pepperoni and PR builds. So if someone submits a PR, um, the whole app will be at least tested that it renders properly, um, and then um, accepts the uh, or accepts the PR to true local caching uh, and also an API integration. Um, but of course, like everything else, is still in progress. We do have a lot of ideas and also. So open PRs, for example, for Windows in place, um, and the technology itself is, is changing quite a bit. So every couple of, now, now it's every month actually, there is a new React Native update. Last year it was like every six, two weeks. Um, I don't know who kept actually up with that update cycle, but in general, it's, it's very interesting to, um, to learn how the technology evolves, but then at the same time, making a project like Pepperoni relevant to new joiners for every month, uh, it's definitely challenging, but well, uh, you wouldn't take it if it wouldn't be a challenge. So all that you ask yourself probably, why do I need it? Um, and to be fair, there are uh, tons of, or also different other story kits or boilerplates out for React Native, um, like Ignite, which is uh, um, one, um, so one of their unique selling points actually that they have CLI generators. Snowflake is maybe a bit less known one, but they have also a bit bigger, um, let's say, boilerplate itself um, with some on backend support. They, for example, lose, they all use different Redux um, uh, add-ons for using uh, asynchronous um, actions. And in the end, it comes down to the fact, what is the preference? What is the choice you want to use? 
um, we focus definitely on having a really small starter kit because what nothing is more uh, useless if you start with something and you have to drop more than you actually got. Um, I forgot also one, which is Crack Native App, which is a new one from Facebook. I think they released a couple of months now or weeks ago, um, and there you can basically like Crack Crack uh, have your um, have a very simple um, React Native app um, almost out of the box, but that is already a bit more limited. So, for example, you cannot use um, use it with native extension. You can only use it with JavaScript code. So everything has like ups and downs, and we wanted to provide something which is relevant for us to start um, building apps, and we also hope that it's interesting for others which like to use a specific set of, um, uh, of tools. And if you still ask if it's something for you, so React Native in general and Pepperoni, <coughs> it definitely is something for you if you're a JavaScript for React developer, because it enables you to write native apps um, almost straight away with just a bit of extra learning when it comes to the native extensions. And if you're a native developer for iOS and for Android, um, it, gives you, um, it gives you already um, some more background knowledge when it comes to adding um, more native components, but it still might be a bit more challenging to get to, to the whole JavaScript and React ecosystem. So to recap once more, why should you use Pepperoni? What is Pepperoni? It's a very slim starter kit which focuses on the essentials of an app. So if you want to build your app, you don't want to focus on simple things like navigation, you want to get started with the features you're building. Um, Pepperoni comes in place and it's powered by our lovely Shelly Corn uh, and Spice program, which uh, funds uh, open source uh, projects um, when, for our future employees when they work on that in their free time. So get pepperoni today, and thanks for listening, guys.